Hello everyone and welcome to Brick Cats. My channel is for anyone who enjoys custom LEGO creations, likes saving money, and or those looking to get into custom building. If you're a fan of my channel or are interested in supporting what I do, please consider subscribing, liking this video, or leaving a comment. Each subscription, like, and comment helps others find my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Today I am reviewing Designer Flying Space's MIDI scale Venator class Star Destroyer called the Negotiator. If you're interested in building this or any other Brick Vault model, you can take 15% off the cost of your order by using my discount code, CATS15. I do receive a small amount of compensation when you use my code, and this is an amazing way to support my channel while taking the bite out of the price of the instructions. Without any substitutions in January 2024, I was getting 5 stores and $366 without shipping and tax, or about $427 with shipping and tax, and I did use $7 for shipping. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics and model features, parts issues you might want to look out for, the build experience, the model's integrity, and I close out with my overall impression and pricing information in the conclusion. If you're watching this review, I assume you have bought the instructions or are interested in buying them. I also assume a basic level of familiarity with Bricklink's ordering system and LEGO nomenclature. I only use genuine LEGO bricks and I always purchase the instructions. Finally, I create these reviews for my own personal enjoyment, and in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. The Negotiator measures 27 inches long, about 12.5 inches wide, and sits 8.5 inches off the surface of your table. The stand is built in and cannot be removed, but you could make it sit higher or lower if you really wanted to. Up at the front, there's great detailing in the nose section, and I was really impressed how well the four sections of the hull come together. One nice thing about this model compared to the Torment Imperial Star Destroyer, also from Flying Space, is that the bottom section seemed to be much better supported in this model, and I have not had these droop and create an unsightly gaff right here. The main hangar bay door dominates the top side of the front of the negotiator. It doesn't open, which is obviously understandable given the display nature of the model, and the narrowing of the bay door, while not smooth, is gradual enough that it looks really good. In Revenge of the Sith, the hangar bay door narrows considerably less than it does in certain Clone Wars Venators, so I assume this is a Revenge of the Sith version. The front hull plates are nearly entirely studless and are built in sections that span the full length of the main part of the ship. There's really great detailing with this small area of relief right here, and the slots right above the front turbo laser. The Republic Insignia is brick-built, and at this scale it's either not possible or at the very least extremely difficult to get the proper se separation of the red sections, so they are solid. I could go either way on if the center should be dark tan, as you see here, or the standard tan, but that's a detail you can switch out according to your preference. The other thing to note about the Republic logo is that I believe, I have to check, but I think that the separation is uh, parallel with the main axis of the ship, and this is a kind of off, uh, I have an off angle, so it wouldn't look screen accurate even if you could get the little separation there. Nobody does Greveling like Flying Space and on the Negotiator the Greveling runs the length of the ship and looks absolutely great. It's not one continuous subassembly and is built with a number of different connection points on the frame. So by flipping the orientation of the front half of the hull plates, the bottom edge you can see here, they're actually tiles instead of wedges and that looks a lot better as far as not seeing too many anti-studs. So you can compare that with the rear section back here. And you can see it's just very busy around all of the wedges, and then compare that with the tile section right here. The turbo laser emplacements on either side of the command tower are shaped extremely well, and I really like how these look. It's also a really neat but somewhat finicky part of the build, but the results are totally worth it. Basically this entire section just kind of slot. Uh, this is a sub-assembly, and it drops in here very nicely. The back half of the hull has a more standard build, more on system I should say, uh, with these wedge sections and the red stripes completing the main shape of the hull. The graveling sections continue and include the starboard and port hair base, with a seamless transition between the angle section of the graveling. The command tower also gets all of the angles and different sections nearly perfect. There is kind of an unfortunate gap, it's not so visible from this angle, but you do notice it a little bit here, but without that you don't get these angled side sections, which are our screen accurate. The Starfighter and Control Bridge Towers look great without being overdone, and there's some more detailing with roller skate pieces to break up what would, also, what would otherwise be kind of a monotonous gray wall, 
and you can kind of see the roller skates here, just breaking up the flat surface of the sides there. I also really like this front section, which just kind of drops in here. The detailing continues on the back of the command tower as well. And the rear hull section that holds the hyperdrive in between the engines is set at a slight downward angle, which is also cam and accurate. The rear of the Vemeter houses the eight main engines, and these are all well constructed and also very well scaled. There's no significant drooping as the connection points are pretty stable, and even though it looks like a lot, there isn't a whole lot of weight on these. Finally, to either side, these filler subassemblies are also very accurate and very well constructed. The underside of the model looks just as good as the top, again, almost completely studless. I'm not going to flip it over here, but I got some pictures. The small ventral hangar bay, as well as the engineering section just behind it, are represented accurately. The red stripe on the forward section of the lower hull does seem to be missing some of the th thicker sections we see in Revenge of the Sith, and it does look a little thinner than it should be to me, but given the scale of this model and the space it has to fit into, that's an acceptable trade-off. The Negotiator is an amazing model, and this is pretty much peak display value for me. Its very minor flaws are either barely visible or understandable trade-offs, and you're not going to be dwelling on them once this is on your shelf. Slant Space's Negotiator requires 255 elements and 3,125 pieces. My general observation is that most of the pieces either have a visible edge, so the color matters, or it's not very expensive to begin with in the specified color. So overall, it's a very efficient parts list in that regard. The 5 hinge plate 1x2 with two fingers on end, undetermined type, specified in black, part 4276, are hidden inside the ship and can be any color. I also recommend changing this to the hollow stud variant, part 4276B. The undetermined type variant is scheduled for deletion from the Brickland catalog, and this is basically the part number that sellers list when they're lazy and they don't bother to distinguish. Same with the 5 hinge plate 1x2 with 3 fingers on end, undetermined typed, part 4275. Again, these can be any color, and I recommend changing it to part 4275B, which is again the hollow stud variant. The 4 Technic Plate 1x6 with toothed ends, part 4262, specified in black, is hidden and can be any color. These, along with the 6 Technic Plate 1x8, specified in black, part 4442, can also be any color, shape the frame of the Venator. The 2 Brick 1x8 in light bluish gray, part 3008, are hidden inside the frame and can be any color. These are right about here and form part of the Bridge Tower's support base. The following largest plates are completely hidden inside the frame or as part of the base for the side assemblies and can be any color. Same for the following Technic Bricks, which make up a majority of the core of the Venator, or the spine rather. Two of the four Technic Lift Arm 1x11 in black, part 32525, are hidden inside the model and can be any color. The other two are used in the stand and should remain black. The following elements will likely be less expensive if you, if you order them directly from LEGO's Pick a Brick service. Pick a Brick orders over $35 total qualify for free shipping, and if you spend more than $14 in the bestseller and the standard categories, all of the handling fees are waived. And this list reflects everything available on Pick a Brick as of early January 2024. Finally, I used the Brick Hunter extension to check the entire parts list against the Pick a Brick inventory. Check out my video on Brick Hunter if you haven't already or don't know how to use it. You'll see in the conclusion how much I was able to save by ordering parts directly from LEGO. Flying Space's negotiator instructions have 1,556 steps, with each part or subassembly added in each step outlined in teal on a white background. This works just fine for visibility. You're generally only adding a maximum of 5 or 6 pieces in a given step and usually less, so the build goes at a nice pace even though there are a lot of them. Assembling these large side structures can get a little tedious, so I did take some breaks throughout the build. Flying Space consistently produces some of the best instructions, and Negotiator is no exception. The steps are supplemented with notes showing subtle rotations, calling out specific elements to use if it's not 100% obvious. I'm talking about the modified bricks with studs on sides. And for larger subassemblies, the connection points are nicely highlighted with real-life photos showing how to do it. There's also a series of landmark type graphics that help you determine if you've done a particularly tricky connection correctly or if it needs some adjustment. This is a huge help and being able to tell you've done it correctly takes a lot of stress out of placing the large side structures. 
At various points in the build, I did find this model to tilt noticeably one way or the other. After attaching the two bottom side sections after step 577, the model is noticeably front heavy. The model tilts the other way towards the rear after you attach the rear fin section between the engines in step 961. And I mention this not because it's a problem, you're just going to want to be a little bit more careful not to nudge it in the wrong direction for fear of it falling in a bad way. The only part of the model I didn't enjoy as much was construction of the turbo laser batteries. Flying Space uses the roller skate connection quite frequently in his models, and the end of the roller skate does fit into other elements even though it's definitely an illegal connection. It's also not the easiest connection to make, and the minifigure hand pieces are also quite difficult to get onto the wheel sections of the roller skate. Indeed, I had a couple of the minifigure hands launch into low earth orbit when they popped off, so take care with those. I did find a very few minor issues that were mostly with the sequencing of smaller subassemblies. As a reminder, sequencing issues are when steps would be better in a different order at a di or at a different point in the build. In step 305, this wasn't actually a problem, but I do think this is best done as a subassembly. If you place either one of these elements first, you can't easily insert the pivot stub of the hinge brick into the hole on the modified 1x1 brick. This is more or less the same story in step 313. The hinge plate should connect to the modified brick first, then attach the two subassemblies together with the dark red tile. In step 642 and 718, it's hard to get the second 1x1 clip in place as shown, because in order to rotate it downwards, it runs into the jumper plate that went on in step 640 or step 716 for the other side. Thus, the tiles with clips should probably go on in step 639. The subassembly connected in step 1122 is hard to get in place as shown because the minifigure neck brackets are in the way. This subassembly should just be part of these other subassembly in step 1121 just before, and then the whole thing connected in the next step. The last issue I found was just an odd visual, and that's the subassembly box in step 1301, which shows two brackets when only one of them is being connected in this step. I didn't find any viewing angle problems or steps of floating pieces which contribute to the comfortable pacing of the build. So while the Negotiator is a decently complex model to build, given Fly and Space's attention to detail in the instructions, I think most builders with a few of the larger sets with a Technic Core under their belt would be able to handle it just fine, or a beginner builder with some assistance from a more experienced builder. I did pre-sort some of the pieces and the build probably took me about 10 hours in total. The Negotiator is intended primarily for display and doesn't have any play features. It is a reasonably stable model, however, and while you generally aren't going to be handling it much, it's not going to be a problem to move it around, albeit a little bit carefully. There are a couple of areas that are less solid than others. Some of the wedges and the tiles on the edge are a bit tenuous and can be a bit of a pain to put back in place, especially around here. This diagonal section between the command bridges and the starfighter control uh, is just sitting there in place, so you're not going to be turning this over but that's not something you're going to be wanting to do anyway. I said earlier that the Greebling along the edge is pretty well connected, and unlike the Torment, these are not large subassemblies. In the Torment, the Greebling strip is like one long section, and if you bow it in in one place, um, it's really hard to get back, um, but that's not the case here. The engines, while they are fairly long, they don't sag at all from what I can tell, and like I said, they're also very solidly connected and can stand up to casual bumps. With the two large engines, so this one and one opposite, I did have an issue in which the two Technic bricks that hold the axle that runs through um, the interior portion of it and actually connect it to the model, the two Technic bricks did come off. That turned out to be really inconvenient to replace and required a fair amount of disassembly to do that. So I would not try to touch the large engines uh, as much as possible to avoid that situation. I also experienced the rear half of the lower side panels separating a bit. In theory, this back half right here is anchored in two locations, one right at the end with an open stud and another closer to the center line with a 1x2 solid stud connection. There is a fair bit of weight hanging off these two connections though, and the open stud isn't fully connected either. To strengthen this, I augmented the 1x2 connection and turned it into a 2x3 connection. This took two extra 2x3 plates in any color and 12 additional 1x2 plates in any color. Getting some extra clutch as shown solved this problem very well. The stand is not removable and does provide a reasonably stable platform for the ship to sit on. There are some issues with the slopes coming off, but these are pretty easy to put back. While the ship is stable on the stand, since the connection is only on basically one axis, there is a fair amount of flex and wobble about the connection point. You've probably seen this wagging back and forth. 
I don't think there's much chance that this model starts gyrating so much that the Technic connection comes loose, but if you get to that point, other things are going to break before the SAN connection anyway. Alliance Faces Negotiator is definitely in my top 5 favorite mocks I've reviewed to date, it's just that good. It has amazing display presence, the instructions make the build experience a pleasure, and it's not going to fall apart on you if you breathe on it the wrong way. The build techniques also keep things interesting throughout, and while the large hull sections can get a little repetitive, it's a really cool feeling when they line up and connect perfectly with the frame. Without any substitutions, I was getting 5 stores and $366 without shipping and tax, or about $427 with shipping and tax, again using $7 per store for shipping because you are buying quite a bit of LEGO. With my substitutions, I got 5 stores and $328 without shipping and tax, or about $386 with shipping and tax. Buying the shorter list of elements directly from pick -a brick my pick -a brick total was $105. That did not include any shipping and handling charges because I met the minimums, but does include tax. Buying the remaining elements from Bricklink, I was getting 4 stores and $212 without shipping and tax, or about $273 with shipping and tax, for a total of $360. Finally, using the Brick Hunter extension to buy as much as possible from Pick a Brick, my Pick a Brick total was $318, and again, that doesn't include any shipping and handling, but does include tax. The remaining elements from Bricklink would be 4 stores and $27 without shipping and tax, or about $53 with shipping and tax, and for this I dropped the shipping estimate down to $6 per store. The total was therefore $371. And for this model, I attribute the more expensive full pick brick price to the large quantity of elements you're buying. I think there's probably additional price efficiency you could find by adding more to the partial pick brick list, and I would not be surprised if you could get the final price to under $350. Instructions for the negotiator cost $32.99 and are available from Brick Vault's web store. With the level of effort the designer clearly put into these instructions, I do feel that the slightly higher than normal price tag is worth it. There will be a link to the instructions where you can buy them in the description below, and remember you can use the discount code CATS15 for 15% off if you haven't already used it. Brickfall also has frequent sales, and the discount code does stack with whatever sale happens to be running at the moment, so that's going to be a great deal for you. Thanks as always for watching my review of Flying Space's Negotiator Venator Class Star Destroyer. If you built the model you have something to share that I left out, or have a question about something I didn't cover, please leave your thoughts below in the comments. Remember to subscribe, leave the video a like or a comment, and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Each subscription, comment, and like helps increase the channel's visibility, and again, I greatly appreciate your support. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you back next time.